Welcome back. Now, time for our Money Minute. Not a good day on Wall Street at all. Here's a look at the number and how the major indices fared. The Dow dropped 531 points. Oil also dropped just a little below $40 a barrel at one point before coming back up slightly. Uh, this after the Dow Jones fell nearly 360 points yesterday. The S&P did just as bad, dropping more than 2% yesterday and 3.5% today. The sell-off in stocks is attributed to global market fears stemming from a poor Chinese economy. U.S. oil prices again hit a six-year low, dropping under $40 a barrel at one point today. This is the lowest since the 2009 financial crisis. The cause, again, China's slumping economy and limited demand. The world's second largest oil consumer is stumbling. Supply of crude oil is higher than global demand. Almost 7 million Americans have gone over a year since they made their last student loan payment. Quarterly data from the Education Department uh, shows that nearly 17 percent of all federal loan borrowers are in severe delinquency. That student loan debt problem is huge. Texas is famous for tea, Texas tea, also known as oil, but the next energy boom will be coming from the sun. Solar energy firms are in the Lone Star State are responsible for one billion dollars worth of investment. Warren Lasher from the Electronic Reliability Council of Texas told the Wall Street Journal, quote, solar is going to become one of the most cost-effective sources of electricity on the grid. Thanks, John. Our economy will no doubt be a topic of heated discussion as we approach the 2016 election. Up for debate, how to stabilize and re-energize our economy. Our next guest claims to have the key to do just that and some insight into improving our education system as well. Today, we want to welcome in the author of An Entrepreneur's Manifesto, Steve Mariotti. Steve, thanks so much for joining us here live on Newsmax Now. You're welcome. Good to be here. Steve, you left a very successful business career to reach out to inner city youth. And from there, you formed an organization called the Network for Teaching Entrepreneurship. I want to talk to you about Rodney Walker, who came from a very difficult childhood, but things turned around when he found your organization. Here's a little bit of Rodney's story. And you can see this all across cities in America, including my hometown, Chicago. High homicide rates high dropout rates, poverty across the board. And when you have the deprivation that I've experienced, uh, a lot of my choices were dictated off of what I knew in my community. So living in a homeless and dilapidated homes and with violence was what made up my life. But Rodney says once he got involved with Nifty Mentors, things just changed drastically. He not only graduated from high school, but he went on to Yale for grad school. Steve, why does your program, Nifty, work so well in places like the south side of Chicago? Well, I think the big reason is that children that are raised in poverty develop street smarts and develop many of the attributes of, an, of the entrepreneur. And I spent 34 years as a, a teacher specializing in low-income children, children in foster care, children that are incarcerated, and teaching them how to start small businesses. And Nifty has become a global movement. I'm very proud of it. And you should be. Steve, based on your experience, what do you think the government's role should be in helping kids like Rodney, who we just saw from places that are in, like Chicago that are stricken with violence right now? Well, I think there's two things that the governments all over the world and have a global perspective on this is, I think, very important. But number one is um, the, the idea that every child, every young person should learn how to start a business before they graduate from college. I think that's absolutely essential. And we at NIFTI have developed a curriculum that can be used every year through school. And uh, I, I think that's a very uh, beautiful thing. Number two uh, is the tax codes of the world. Uh, with very few exceptions, the interrelationship between the governments of the world and between the entrepreneur are often complex and are very difficult to teach, particularly to a low-income person who doesn't have an accountant or a lawyer to help them. So simplifying that, making it simple to teach and simple so that every human being can start a business or be self-employed and easily pay their taxes, I think it's very important. With only about 40 seconds left to go, what would you say is the best way to improve the quality of education in our economy in this country? 
Well, I'm a big fan of competition. Um, I think the more competition we, I happen to be a big fan of the voucher system. The more competition we have, the better it is for teachers, for kids, for their parents, and ultimately the better our, our economy is going to do and the better the world's economy uh, is going to do, which will benefit everybody. So whenever we can make things competitive, I think it's healthy for everybody. Steve Mariotti, thanks so much for joining us here on Newsmax Now. Hope you come back again. You're welcome. Thank you. Are you kidding me? This started as a joke, <laughs> right? It was a joke. And now it's a real thing. The headlines that are turning into today's punchlines. More laughs when Newsmax Now continues. Thank you.